What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today, we're featuring a very special car. We're featuring this awesome Volkswagen Beetle. My buddy Chris from Jay Leno's Garage is here. They actually run the detailing product side for Jay Leno's Garage. If you guys are wondering, this is one of the things, people always ask you, how is it that you guys can keep all of those, what, 250 cars? How many cars is it? It's like 200 cars, a little more than that in bikes, so. Yeah, so a lot of people ask you, how do you guys keep them all clean, right? Yep. And the answer is, you guys created your own detail product line. That is so crazy. It's what we had to do. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of the thing. You believe in your own product, you're a car enthusiast yourself, and you built this bug. Yeah, I've had the bug, I don't know, uh, since 08, I want to say. Um, and it's just been a side project. Like, keep me busy. You know, starting something like this with Jay is definitely stressful at times. And so you need a way to get away from things and kind of get your mind away from stuff. So I'm a big proponent of doing things on my own, kind of working with my own hands. And so it's just been fun, you know, been building it over the last 10 years or so, 10, 12 years. And, all right, so forgive me, I'm kind of a Volkswagen dummy. I love them, I think they look great. I love the iconic shape. I've featured one other one that in Japan actually at Daikoku is kind of more of, I guess, a drag car. But uh, I've been around them pretty much all my life. One of my good buddies that I started racing with um, in autocross, he actually had a cow look one. And I actually did the Gene Berg rally with him one time. Wait. Yeah, so I kind of know a little bit about that stuff and you know, I know that certain things are like really cool to have or rare to have like having a five speed is like super awesome, yeah. right? For yep, our old absolutely. The Berg is the big thing. They're yeah. the same as, you know, there's stuff like JDM where there's specific little details of JDM that are cool because of where it comes from or it's handmade, whatever it might be. You have the same stuff with Volkswagen, you know, and, and Berg's a great example. They're local here. We're in Orange today. They're right up the street, actually, and that is a sought after. If you do that five-speed conversion in a Volkswagen, you've done something pretty big to the car, you know, so a lot of guys are really into that. So let's kind of go over this thing. It's really good looking right off the bat. Just I already spent maybe uh, an hour and a half to two hours just photographing it and pouring over all the little details but I've refrained so much from talking about it at all because um, I don't wanna, you know, blow, blow uh, Chris's load too early or blow my load too early on this thing. I just wanna be surprised about it. Uh, I already know the color is very special. Tell us yeah. a little bit about so the color. The color is, you know, if you've ever had the chance to paint your own car, the, the question of what color are you going to do it? I don't know. For me, it was a big decision. Do I go black? Do I go white? Do you know, where do you kind of a red or a green? There's so many decisions. And then that just flows down through the rest of the car. And whenever Scion Toyota came out with that cement gray, I saw it on the TC. And as soon as I saw it, the car was in primer at the time. I said, that's what I got to have. It's a kind of a a, I guess they call it cement gray, but to me it, it's that primer gray kind of look, but you're not dealing with that primer gray, you know, you touch primer with the oily hands and those fingerprints are there forever. This is that look, but with a, a nice quality finish to mm -hmm. it, you know. Wow, it actually looks really good, but you kind of did your own mix on it, right? It's not the actual. Yeah, yeah it's a little color. different. It's got a little more blue in it. Um, and then there's like a, a little bit of pearl that we mixed in as well. So you'll get some violets, depending on how the light's hitting it, you know? That's really cool. That's really important for you guys coming from the detailing side. So let's talk a little bit about the exterior. So what are some of the things that you've changed or you've uh, restored on this? Because what year is this? So it's a 1963 standard Beetle. I haven't done much in terms of body mods. The biggest thing, this is major detail for Volkswagen guys, but this Wolfsburg Crest ended in 63. But the hood on this car it's a raised emblem. So this technically, this hood shouldn't have that crest. So aside, as far as body mods go, that's really the only thing. It's a small detail, but I really dig that crest. Um, it's that Wolfsburg crest, and it's just so quintessential Volkswagen that I had to have it on the car. Um, and so I, I installed that. But other than that, 
I kept it stock. I really like the stock styling. A lot of guys, girls will, you know, shave out the molding and, you know, they'll change things up a little bit, maybe no turn signals up front. For me, I just wanted to keep it stock original in terms of styling. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. Okay. Very cool. So tell us about the wheels. They're really special. I've so, never actually seen these on a Volkswagen. Before. So the wheels are BRMs. Um, I kind of did my little touch to them. Often they are kind of a, a polished lip as well as the polished ribs. I wanted to go a little darker, kind of a little more outlaw look to it. And so I just went, did a black rim, uh, a flat matte black. That way it kind of tied into what's going on in the back uh, with the engine tin and all that. But just a, a cool, different look to it. And the tough thing with Volkswagens is it's such a wide bolt pattern. It's a five by 205 millimeter. So it's this huge spacing on these bolts. And um, I to, just noticed that. Yeah, yeah. to try to, normally you're in here with bolt pattern. They're all the way out here. So trying to find something that is uh, stylish, um, you're a little bit limited when it comes to the VWs. You, know, you can change uh, rotors around for the brakes and you can get any, type of bolt pattern you want but i like that wide five and it just i i used to run smoothies on this the stock smoothies and that's why i went with that bolt pattern i didn't want to change that up so i kind of wanted to look and see what was out there what was different something that people quite weren't doing yet the brm is a, a popular look for cal for me it was you know doing a black outlook on it was something a little different i like that very very cool all right let's get to the back here it popped the hood Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Usually I have to ask the owner, hey, pop the hood, pop yeah. the trunk, frunk or whatever. No uh, there's no popping here. So is that kind of like, that's the style, right then? So is this is, you know, these are just the brackets for the deck lid. If for some reason I'd, I'd never drive it in the rain, but if I needed to, I have them on quick disconnects. I can pop the deck lid back on and be running, be okay. Um, it makes it easy to pop on and off. Wow. Okay. So tell us about the motor then. So motor is not quite two liters. It's what a 1915, um, 1 1.9 liter, depending on how you want to measure it out. But it's got some hot heads on it. They flow really nicely. The biggest thing for Volkswagens is opening up the valve train, getting air flowing into it, obviously, and then out of it. Stock, they were probably 30 horsepower, maybe, you know, on the best day going downhill with a full tank of gas. So uh, I've done a um, standing mile event and then they have a Volkswagen stock Beetle class. How and long does it take? They're, well, they're hitting like in the mega mile, which is, I guess, a mile and a half. Okay. They, they hit about 75 miles per hour. <laughs> Eight miles. With, with a tailwind, maybe, I don't, I don't know. You really don't want to be going much faster than that in a Volkswagen anyways. <laughs> um, so this is probably from stock, you know, three or four times the horsepower. I haven't dynoed it. I'd estimate about 120 horsepower or so from two liters. Oh, that's a lot because here's another thing that's different between this and other cars that I shoot. When I ask you to move it, you actually physically move it because you gotta it's start so, it. It's so lightweight, you basically just push it wherever you wanna go. Push it wherever it needs yeah. to go. So, yeah. I mean, cause how much does it weigh, you think? Like 1,600 yeah. pounds? Maybe 1,600 pounds, dripping wet. It might, might creep up to 2,000. I doubt it though. I doubt it. I really gotta weigh it and see what it is. Especially now, the interior's brand new in it. So, for having the car as long as I have, it's freshly complete. And now that it's all done, I need to go dyno it and I need to probably put it on a scale just so I know for yeah. my own. I mean, it's got to be pretty fast with, with this much power and it being this light. What, it like, scoots. It yeah. scoots for sure. It, you know, it's not, there's plenty out there that's faster, but when you look at it in terms of what a stock Volkswagen was to what this is, it definitely gets up and moves. I love your, your plate, slow and low. Slow and low. I love that. I, when I was running the deck lid, you couldn't see what was going on underneath. So it was a little bit like a sleeper, you know? And then I had done, you know, all the powder coating and everything. And I was just like, it's such a shame to cover that up. I'm running it without a deck lid, man. Yeah. And so. It looks great. Uh, thank you. It really looks awesome. So how many miles have you put on it with this setup? Uh, this is probably got 10,000 miles on it now. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you drive it quite a bit. I try to drive it as much as I can. I, you know, at the expense of a few paint chips up front, it's what I built it for, you know? It's, I like to drive, it's my little project car, but it's getting it out on the road is probably the best thing. I don't know, it's something strange about 
seeing this thing as a shell completely sandblasted no parts in it and fast forward a couple of years and you're out cruising it up i like to take it up to angeles crest a lot that's a really fun drive and it's different from what you see up there you're always seeing nsx's and yes. porsches and all that so you're really in the corners like so do you have any suspension upgrades on this thing you know i probably should but um i don't it is i do have notched spring plates in the back uh that way it isn't bottoming out as I'm going over bumps. Um, and the front end is narrowed by six inches. So three inches are chopped off at each side. Other than that, it's stock torsion Volkswagen suspension. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not the ultimate Canyon Carver or anything like that. It's, you definitely got to hold on when you're driving it, but um, it's still fun to go put it through some turns, you know? Well, let's let's talk about the interior. First of all, what's this? Is this your luggage or what? It's my luggage. That's where I keep all my uh, my camera gear and everything. Now, this is a speaker box that, again, built this 10 years ago. Bluetooth was, you know, not as big as it is. Now you can buy these luggage things that are pre-made, pre-built, all that stuff. I wanted something that was concealed. I wanted, you know, a, a good sounding sound system in it, but I didn't want, for me, there's nothing more that dates a car than electronics. You know, you see these doubled in head units and guys will cut the dash out and it's cool. You got updated fun stuff to, to play with in there, but boom, it immediately pauses that car in whatever time frame you bought that piece of electronics from. So for me, I wanted to hide it and get it away. So this is a 10 inch subwoofer, a couple six by nines, and I, I believe a 600 watt amplifier all tucked in there, nice and concealed. I like and that. It, connects through Bluetooth so I can just play it through my phone and no one's the wiser, you know, it just looks like luggage back there. Well, let's look at the interior. This is honestly, for me, the centerpiece of this car. If you, This is where it is in terms of like all the little knickknacks that you have. Plus it's so clean in here. Um, the interior, did you do all of this? So I didn't do the interior. Um, a good friend here in Orange as well, guy by the name of Octavio. I, you know, interior work, if you've ever tried it yourself, is just a bear. Um, I tried installing the headliner myself and I almost lit the car on fire with how frustrated I got. It just was so, it, there's so many small little details that I took for granted and just didn't realize what I was getting myself into. And before I knew it, I was saying, you know what, screw it, taking it to a professional and having them do it. And I'm really happy that I did. It looks um, so good. Yeah, yeah I, I chose different material, but I wanted, again, to stick with the stock Volkswagen styling. So I stayed with vinyl headliner, the perforated. Uh, to me, that is just quintessential Volkswagen. That's kind of, you know, people see that and they think VW. Um, same thing with the pattern on the seats. I didn't want to go custom crazy, all sorts of stuff. Just real nice color palette um, and then stock styling with it. So it's got just a little twist, but it looks like it could come from the 60s, but it, it's modern, it's updated, you know? Yeah, the door panels, everything, the fit is so good. They did a really, really good job. I love the pattern here too. Yeah, it's a really cool tweed. It's uh, this tweed matched with this vinyl here was just such a cool combination in terms of having a little bit of black to, to tie the wheels in and what's going on in the back again but then also tied in with the red on the vinyl so tell me about the dash you got this what is the steering wheel about so, what's that this kind of a personal touch for me obviously my name's chris this is a saint christopher um and if you're you know any kind of religion uh, this is the patron saint of travel so his role is to protect you it was what i was named after my dad named me that and so when i saw the horn button that it was a saint christopher i had to get it just because i don't know driving around you know want to be safe when you're moving around all that fun stuff so it's a it's a cool kind of family personal touch for me and um, it's very ornate kind of a very cool look and you know something different than just maybe a vw yeah logo. it looks really really good thank you Oh man, so did you have to redo any of these things like the gauges? Or yeah, yeah, so this is all stock in terms of what they are. You know, I pulled the uh, speedometer apart, brought everything back to zero. So, you know, it was basically a fresh car. Gas gauge was not always stock. Um, that was actually an upgrade to have, um, but it makes it very nice. Um, and then this is an original Sapphire One radio by Bendix. It really just ties the aesthetic of the car together, you know? I love it. And you got some hidden goodies here too. I got some hidden goodies. You know, you wanna keep an eye on everything. Yes. Um, so 
Obviously cylinder head temp with an air-cooled car is a big uh, one to keep an eye on. And then oil temperature with air-cooled oil is doing double duty. It's cooling everything. It's also lubricating everything. So those two for me were kind of the biggest one. Oil pressure is next and then uh, a voltometer too. Yeah, I like that you, you still have a tack just because I'm sure you want to be able to redline this thing without Absolutely. blowing it. But That's why I got that shift light. Yeah, it's very uh, hidden. I like that. That's very, the. It's, it's cool that you can't actually see it from outside the car. Yeah. So tell me about this shifter. This thing looks crazy. So this shifter is fun. This is, uh, this makes it definitely like a little go-kart. That's third gear there and that's fourth. It is just such a short throw and it's out of Germany, a company called Bug Tech. Um, and again, something different. Um, MP is another company that makes parts and hop up parts for Volkswagens, but this was something that I don't see in the California Volkswagen culture. You know, I've never seen one in another car. It was one of those things that, hey, I want to set this apart from uh, other VWs out there. It, it, VWs have been around and been, you know, kind of that entry level kind of beginner collector car. Um, but the customizing and the, the changing things up, there's only so many things that people can do. And it starts to get repetitive at times. And so I really wanted to find something that was different, you know, <laughs> don't roll those windows down. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, showing us this today. Wow, it is awesome. Thank you. Can you start it up so we can hear it? Absolutely. I was hoping you'd ask. Let it warm up. Yeah, we'll let it warm up. Yeah. Yeah, bud. We could even go for a drive. We're gonna go for a drive. The hardest thing is keeping them synced. With dual carbs, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So that was another thing that set this apart was the linkage that the carburetors are working together with is um, a cable system rather than a crossbar linkage um, that most guys put on their VWs. And it makes it very simplified to get them both synced together so they're opening at the same time and you're not dealing with, you know, popping out of one, the other sucking in. So it makes it uh, real easy to work with. Here we go. We're going to go for a quick ride in this thing. Does this have seat belts? No seat belts. Oh, pre seat belts. Pre seat belts. I see why you need that crest. Yeah, seat belts <laughs> are, uh, they will come sooner rather than later. That's next. Oh, you know, the, the thing that surprises me about these all the time is how much room there is inside. They're so small from the outside, but then so roomy on the inside. It's a you know nice economy of space. Yeah, I like that throatiness. You can hear it already. It's uh, it's pretty cool. A little more than the pea shooter exhaust, you know. <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. Bounces around a lot. The suspension is basically your body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that and the seats underneath you. Yeah. Go terrorize the streets here a little bit. Whoa. Whoa. This thing is rowdy. It scoots. Oh my God. You know, if, if I'm considering a uh, if I wanted to match up against some 356s or some air-cooled 911s, it might give them a run for their money. Wow. This surprises me. Oh my God. This thing moves out pretty good. 
for a little four cylinder, yeah, it'll be all right. It's respectable for a VW, you know. Yeah, it, it, it sucks to have that caveat that you can do plenty of horsepower out of these things. You can turbocharge them two and a half liters, and you know, but then you're you're m messing with reliability and overheating all the time. And so, you know. what does Jay think about this car? It's a good question. I don't think he's ever seen it actually. Not yet. It's been maybe a month since I've had it done, done, and you know. Jay Singh, as always, does the horn work. Ah. You know, a lot of guys will build cars and they don't uh, wire in the horn. So that's next, is uh, getting his eyes on it. And the nice thing, too, is I put a taller ring and pinion in it, what is commonly referred to in the Volkswagen world as a freeway flyer transmission. So I can be in fourth gear and top speed is probably 110, 120. Again, much faster than you'd ever want to drive in one of these, but I can do freeway speeds and not be pegged out on RPMs, just complete working the heck out of it, you know? So what does it rev out to? It'll go up to, I have the rev limiter set at 7,000 RPM. Uh, that's probably the upper limit, but way more than stock, you know? Most people kind of get surprised when they see it moving at the same speed as, you know, other cars in regular traffic. A lot of times, Volkswagens, they're just in the slow lane, you know, just kind of putting along, which is fine, but I like to be able to get in the fast lane and go and move, you know? Incredible, I love it so much. And disc brakes all around, that was like the first performance upgrade that I decided to do, just, they came stock with drums and Drums are great if you got them all kept up, but they really don't compare to a set of discs. And so I put disc brakes all around on it. So it, it stops on a dime, you know? Well, thank you so much for showing us this awesome build. You know, these builds take a long time. You, th these, it's not one of those builds where it's like, hey, you got three weeks before the SEMA show. Let's put it all, let's slap it together. You said this took over 10 years? Yeah, and I could have done it quicker than that. I could have gone faster than that, but it was something to work on after work, something to work on on the weekends. I spent a lot of time with my dad working on the car. So it's just, you know, you pick one small project, whether it's wiring the car um, or putting the disc brakes on or setting the front, whatever it might be, fill in the blank. We just took our time and did it, you know, and uh, it made a, for a lot of fun. And now it's time to enjoy it. There you go. Now it's time to enjoy it. That's a wrap. Oh, <laughs> my